listening to a completely new season of Limbic Light Podcast with Manisha Blanchley and co-host David Miller. In this season, we'll be discussing slightly controversial, extremely useful topics designed to help and empower you with knowledge about simple products and methods to make you healthier in completely natural, safe, effective and affordable ways. I've titled this season Unspoken Truths as the information you'll receive is information which is so often hard to find and sometimes blatantly hidden from us. So welcome. Welcome David. It's lovely to be speaking to you once again and we're going to be talking to you about a very interesting slightly controversial subject today and that is borax so David it's something that people wouldn't expect to use medicinally or as a health product but could you actually first tell us what is borax for those of us who don't really aren't that familiar with borax sure Uh, borax is is a, a substance that's mined from the ground and it's just a a salt of boron and boron is a mineral that we all need uh, in regular quantities and and we get it from our food Um, unfortunately because of uh, of the quality of the soil that most food is grown in today we don't get enough boron so it's a fact that most people are deficient in boron, uh, just about everybody, unless you're living uh, in, a, in a, a, a very healthy food situation where your food is, is grown in rich organic soils and you're, you're eating food from those soils, you're likely to be deficient in boron. Um, and by far the easiest, quickest, cheapest way of getting boron, uh, being able to supp- supplement with it, is using borax. Yes, I don't think many people actually realise that uh, borax, which appears on the shelves in supermarkets as a cleaning product, is actually a superb product that, pr- uh, that gives us a supply of boron. So I I remember when I first bought the boron off the shelf and I I had some nervousness around whether I was actually getting the right product and if whether I might be uh, contaminating my body with some chemical substance. So I had a really good read of the label and then I got online to see if it was really the correct uh, chemical constituent. And what I came up with, uh, really, all the borax is, uh, they, they call it sodium tetraborate decarbohydrate, sorry, decahydrate, which I found out really all it is, it's a mixture of sodium and boron and water. And that's all the real molecules that are in boron. So it's actually quite a safe product. Yeah, it, it, it is a safe product to use. And in fact, borax is the most egregious example of the power of the pharmaceutical companies and how they're abusing that power. Um, so it, I, I think just about everybody goes through the same uh, fear and confusion when they, when they buy a container of borax uh, which by law is only allowed to be sold in the cleaning section of a supermarket. And on the side of the container, it's got poison stamped. Um, it is just, it, it is so evil and so wrong that that has been done, uh, that it's, it's a single example of just how uh, uh, the, the, the power of the health authorities has been captured and is being abused. Now, I've been taking borax for nearly 20 years every day. It's it's the only supplement that I regularly take every day. Um, And 
I, I did a lot of research on, on the toxicity of borax to confirm that it is safe. There's a, a material data sheet that's available for everything that's sold retail and, and, and wholesale in Australia. And the material data, data sheet for borax um, shows that it's about the same toxicity as table salt. Mm. Oh, that's incredible. Now, table salt, when you buy a container of table salts in the supermarket, it doesn't have poison stamped on the container. Mm. Mm. And yet borax does. And it's just because of this, this capture of the authorities and the abuse uh, of, 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 of food regulation power. It's, it's quite obscene. So, um, so I'm curious to know more about boron. If you can, if borax is such a superb supplier of the mineral boron, what is it about boron that's so useful and helpful for us? Boron is needed in all sorts of pathways in the body and various reactions in the body. Um, the most important or the, or the most obvious of them are to do with the uptake and regulation and maintenance and use of different minerals, including calcium. So as I said, it's a stabilizer really uh, of minerals and, that are used within the body. So it's, it's, it stabilizes calcium, silicon, copper, magnesium. So um, when you say stabilizer, in, what, do you, what do you actually mean by that? It, if you have got insufficient boron in your body, you're more likely to have calcification in different parts of your body. And calcification is manifested as arthritis, osteoarthritis. Um, it may manifest as different kinds of stones and builds up, build up of calcium deposits in different parts of the body. Uh, so calcium might um, build up in the wrong places. You want calcium in your bones and you want calcium where it's, it's needed and used properly uh, rather than build up of calcium crystals in places where it's going to cause pain and where it shouldn't be building up. Mm. So boron, uh, I, I call it a calcium stabilizer, but it, it makes sure that calcium appears in, in the places where it's really needed and it doesn't build up in the places where it shouldn't causing pain and arthritis oh that's excellent so uh, that's probably one of the reasons also why it's used so extensively for um, arthritic and um, osteoporosis and all sorts of osteo types of conditions that involves I'll, bones. I'll talk a bit more about osteoporosis sure. and um uh, uh, yeah, some of the some of the um, areas where it can help later, but boron sufficiency normalizes a, a lot of other minerals in the body, um, and it it helps bones use calcium properly. Um, yeah, it's 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 a, a, a so the the first and probably one of the most important. Uh, uh, characteristics that it's got is is a, as a stabilizer, um, but it also uh, protects you from fluorides and borax. Uh, um, so, we, with fluorine added to our drinking water and and fluorides uh, being being starting to accumulate in the body of people who drink tap water more regularly, uh, having sufficient boron is important. Um, because it acts as an antidote to fluoride toxicity, and it can actually remove fluoride buildup from the body. Mm. Um, that's so that's true. another very important and useful effect of boron. But boron uh, has many other useful effects. It's, it's a, a, um, a fungicide. It's an antiviral. Um, it... Uh, uh, um, is an antimicrobial. And in fact, this is another thing that, that confuses many people. Uh, they know that borax is effective against insects, 
So if you've got an ant or a cockroach or a mite invasion in your home, um, bor borax powder is effective against insects. Um, and it's also effective against parasites and protozoa. So people think, look, if, if borax <laughs> can be used against ant infestations or other, other insects, how can it be healthy for a human? Um, and, and the reason is that our insects uh, just have a completely different structure to humans. And uh, yes, bo borax <laughs> um, does kill off and remove insects, but it, it's, it, uh, it is not harmful for humans. Like normally when you're using a pesticide, um, the pesticide kills insects. You assume that the pesticide is also harmful for people, and that's correct. But this is a case where something that is harmful for insects is genuinely not at all harmful for humans because mm -hmm. it's just used by the insects in such different ways on their, their, their uh, bodies. Mm, that's so interesting. Yes, I've been taking boron for quite some time too. We'll actually explore how to take boron later in its... Um... You mean borax? Oh, yes, I do. Yeah. I, I yeah. interchange the two words actually um, very easily because I consider borax really a, a form of boron. So I often call it. Um, it, it is, yeah, yeah. Boron but, instead uh, of borax. It's possible to take boron in other forms. And in fact, people, some people who are fearful of borax, unnecessarily fearful of borax, uh, do. Uh, buy tablets that contain boron or certain supplements contain boron but uh, it is it's it's far healthier and far cheaper and far more efficient to take borax as your source of boron rather than other uh, uh, other processed ways of getting boron mm. Yes, I, one of the first indications that I read about borax being used for was for candida. And I think that's quite a commonly known, well, amongst the alternative um, health media, that um, borax is really effective in helping candida uh, processes. And I guess that relates to what you were saying about it's antifungal. And um, yes, so... Yeah, That's boron is 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 a a, a, um, a, a treatment for candida. Um, yeah, just going through some of the other characteristics of of boron, um, it's a hormone normalizer, so it stimulates the production of of hormones and stabilizes estrogen in particular. It assists with insulin uh, insulin use and. Uh, um, uh, uh, it, it controls uh, triglyceride use, uh, it produces reactive oxygen. Um, so again, it's, it's very useful in the hormonal system. Mm, so um, for a, a, a woman who's uh, menopausal could be very good. And also for anyone who's diabetic or pre-diabetic, I imagine they could benefit yeah. from it. Yep. Yeah. It's, it, so it's an assistant. It's, it's not... Um, something that is going to completely heal and treat anything to do with hormones. It's an assistant. Mm -hmm. So, so basically, you, you mentioned candida earlier, and if, you, if you've got problems with estrogen, um, it assists. But for, for candida, the key thing you have to do is just cut out all sugar and all mm. sweet food. Of um, course. You know, that, that's, that's uh, a precondition to being mm -hmm. able to heal your candida. You, you, uh, it's, it's sugar. Um, and then you, with, with hormonal problems, uh, th there are other keys that you have to address. But boron is very useful uh, as, as an assistant there. Maybe one of the reasons why it's, it's uh, so effective for hormones and so many other conditions is because it's a mineral stabilizer. As you said, it regulates the um, uptake and the use of different minerals. I also read that it was really um, key with magnesium that it's very much tied into that as well so maybe that's one of the the, the the mechanisms or the reasons why the borax works so well for so many conditions is because it's action on minerals and minerals are just so key and vital to so many conditions 
Yes, yeah. And um, yeah, none of them work alone. Uh, you know, for your minerals um, to be in normalcy, um, you, you, you have to have sufficient magnesium and uh, a variety of other minerals. But it, the, the interesting thing is that boron is particularly hard to get if you're on a processed food diet. Um, and uh, e even if you think you're eating quite well, you may be living in uh, a part of the world, areas of the world where there's uh, boron insufficiency. Um, and, and also with, with more and more food in the world uh, being grown with, with what they call broadacre farming, where uh, the, the foods are, are planted and sprayed and chemical fertilizers are added, that actually breaks up the, the deep hummus or humus in soil and you, you end up with rather sandy soils without this, the, the deep organic soil content. And it's the, the organic soil that holds boron. It's, it's, uh, and unfortunately, you can't spray boron back into the soil mm -hmm. because if you, if you try adding borax to your soil or you try and spray it back, you kill the insect life in your soil. Um, so it's, 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 it's very difficult. The only way that you can really put boron back in the soil is to build up a deep, rich soil again um, and then add uh, borax to your compost and, and get it back that way. Mm. One of the things that um, I, I think that bor borax could be so useful for in these days is people are in a, a lot of pain um, and you know the, the arthritis and joint pain and I, I see so much of it and I had one client who um, had severe heel pain and she tried so many different both natural and conventional uh, treatments or methods to help her and then one day I, I suggested to her you know maybe you could try some borax and she did it rather religiously she only just had a small amount but you know consistently every day and the next time I saw her it was only a month later she told me that her pain had been diminished um, it was only maybe 10 or 20 percent of what it was before it had virtually gone and she was so pleased and um, I was really pleasantly surprised too to hear how uh, that was the only new intervention that she had implemented in that time. So um, it can really help for all sorts of joint pains. I think that's one of its major well-known benefits. Would that be Absolutely. Correct? Absolutely. Yes. If you have any kind of joint pain or bone problem, um, borax is, is the first thing to try. Um, borax is one of the wonderful remedies that I, the, the, the definition of a, of a remedy is, is something that you can use and that does no harm. So you can take borax and basically it's only going to do you good. It will, it won't do you any harm. And um, so if you have any kind of joint pain, any kind of bone pain, uh, start taking borax. Um, you've got absolutely nothing to, to, to lose. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful remedy, remedy that can only help and will not harm you. You see, the problem with most other medicines is that they are harmful, particularly pharmaceutical medicines. If you, if you decide to take any pharmaceutical med medicine, there's always a, a cost. It always has side effects. But a, a really good, healthy, natural remedy only has positives. It doesn't have negatives. So, yes, the, the first thing to try if you have any kind of joint pain is borax. And I've heard hundreds and hundreds of testimonials from people who I've recommended try it and who've been absolutely delighted to find that it's, it's, it's sorted their problem. My, my own personal experience, as I said, I've been taking 
Forex for, uh, I, I didn't quite note when I first started taking it regularly, but it, it'd be um, coming on 20 years probably. Mm. Um, I'm, uh, I, I have no joint pains or bone pains whatsoever. Um, so I, I can exercise. I, I, I go for a, a jog once or twice a week, a, a four kilometer jog. Um, I, I uh, get up in the morning and I have no pains at mm -hmm. all. Um, and I attribute that to having boron sufficiency. Mm. It, it really does work. And that's quite unique, quite unusual for um, someone in your age. I mean, I'm, uh, you're still a good writer. Yeah. You know. I'm, I'm, I, I, I suppose I'm, I, I, I don't normally talk about how many years old I am, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, in, I'm entering old age, um, and, and so it's uh, very I'm unusual. Go, go on a 4K jog with mm. with no effort. It's just easy. Mm. I have, and one of my closest friends has been taking borax about the same time length of time as me. Um, he has had his 70th birthday now, and he's able to jog 10 kilometers, which he does mm. regularly, and has no pain or no joint problems whatsoever. Phenomenal. At the age of 70. That's so great. It's it's so unusual. You know, it's the most common complaint that I hear about with people who are, you know, 50 onwards, um, that they have pains, aches and pains here and there. And and it's so common. It's, it's, it's a terrible situation that we're in where most people who are in their 60s and 70s and 80s now are thinking about hip replacements mm. and knee replacements so true. and the, the, the number of uh, surgical replacements of joints that, that are done are obscene. And basically it's unnecessary. Uh, if people looked after their joints by having boron sufficiency for, for years, um, the, 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 this, whole, this whole aspect of the medical industry would disappear. It is, it's so sad and it's, it's so unnecessary and it's absolutely outrageous that boron, the, the simple cheap cure for all this, is being outlawed or hidden or discredited. Mm, talking about that, um, one of the biggest resistances that I meet with um, clients or people who I recommend the borax to is exactly that. They wonder whether it's safe because they feel, well, getting something off the shelf from Bunnings or from a supermarket in the cleaning section with um, poison written on it, they're really concerned and they want to be um, assured, reassured that it is actually safe. Um, so can you speak about that a little bit? Or, and, and just to add to that, I had read that all borax, unless it's got a perfume odour, which means something's been added to it, um, is, is actually, if it's true, borax is uh, safe. But can you add to that and just uh, maybe reassure some of our listeners about its safety? Yeah. In fact, uh, we're all put into a state of cognitive dissonance dissonance by this poison stamped on the bottle and the, the 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 painful mental adjustment that we have to make is that if it's true that borax really is safe and that the poison stamped on the side of the container is a harmful misleading lie then you have to come to the realization that our government and that our regulatory authorities are not acting in our best interests at all at all and it's it's a it's a painful mental realization to actually get deep down that one of the the, the most benign beneficial remedies is is being taken away from most people for the sake of pharmaceutical profits and uh, with a result that so much arthritis exists in the community, that so many joint and bone problems exist in the community, uh, that elderly people suffer from osteoporosis. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible, terrible realization to get it mentally. 
And many people just can't make that mental jump. It, it's a terrible cognitive dissonance. Yeah, coming to the realization that the, the that the poison stamped on the borax bottle is uh, is a result of pharmaceutical lobbying, uh, the power of politicians, the capture capture of regulatory agencies. Uh, it, it's a realization that this is not conspiracy theory. That this this at least I'm I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I've been working here for. I've been working in this industry now for, for 20 years, and I've been taking borax myself for nearly two decades. And I really, really get it deep down that there's the most terrible, unnecessary lies that have been told uh, about borax by so many powers that be. So, David, it's, maybe you could speak a little bit more about um the ways to take it and the recommended dosages so that people can be really assured that they're, you know, getting the correct dosage and it's well within the recommended um, uh, daily amounts. What, how do you normally recommend? I, I can talk about it, but uh, uh, I, I do have a web page on Borax mm. and that uh, um, uh, That's your grow really lays out how to take it. You can take it internally or you can take it externally. Okay, so maybe we could it, just refer to that page. It is, um, it's your website, which is, is full of useful information. And it's um, growyouthful.com. And yes. if you scroll down to the remedies and look for borax, um, you'll find really useful information there and uh, including what David's just going to mention now. So go yeah. ahead, David. So, so to take, I, what, I take borax just in a maintenance dose every day. Um, so I, I take a, a heaped, uh, two heaped teaspoons of borax and I mix them up in a litre bottle of water. Um, it doesn't dissolve immediately. It, it, you, you give it a good shake and then you leave it overnight and you give it a good shake the next day. And it, it takes about uh, half a day or a day to dissolve properly. And I call that the concentrate. And I take two teaspoons of concentrate every day in uh, a glass of water. And sometimes I, I split it uh, over morning and evening, but that's not necessary. So uh, I have quite a heavy maintenance dose. Um, some people I know, my, my friend uh, who, who runs 10 kilometers, he takes borax. What he does is he licks the tip of his finger and then just dips it in the, uh, the tub of borax and just takes a few grains on the end of his tongue. And that's his daily dose. Oh. But I, I'm, I'm the kind of person that prefers to measure things a bit more Mm. Um, accurately I'll share um, my um, recommendation if that's okay too um, yeah. so I take borax every morning as well but I just take a decent pinch in a glass of water but however I used to recommend and and the uh, case that I just mentioned before about the pain in the heel um, the method that I recommended for her was to do three pinches of borax in a liter of water which is drunk throughout the day so you consume that whole liter of water and it contains basically three pinches of the borax so there's a few different ways but it's it's moderate and I, I like I like your method as well to create a a, um, a concentrate and to take precise a bottle amounts. of concentrate although yeah. it's hardly concentrated <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. If, you, if you're taking borax for some of the things that it's a very good remedy for you may want to have higher doses so, if, for example, if you're taking borax as a as a fungicide or as a treatment for candida after you've stopped your sugar, um, you you there there are higher doses. And on the the Grow Youthful website uh, or the web page for borax, I, I detail uh, just how much you'd need to take, and it's 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 quite a lot higher if uh, for some uses mm. um, and. Uh, uh, if, if another, there are some other aspects of, of uh, boron that are, uh, um, or some of its characteristics. Um, 
it's it's a blood thinner, for example, mm. um, and that it's could be a, useful. It, it assists with inflammation, and it's 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 an amazing toxin remover. So if you've got heavy metals in your body, if you're suffering from mercury or lead or cadmium, um, borax is 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 very efficient as a chelator in removing these heavy metals. Would you take um, it at the same dosage as what you were recommending then? No, you'd need low? to up the dosage. Okay. So that's where it's it's useful to to identify why you're taking borax mm. and then take the appropriate dose. So I imagine for a cleanser, uh, as a chelator or toxicity, you'd you'd maybe do it short term, but at higher dosages. But yes, for exactly. Something that you're wanting to supplement to keep your body really healthy with those boron levels, you want smaller amounts, but consistency over a long period of time. Yes. Yep. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, just very briefly, I wanted to ask you, there's a lot of women that I know who are in the postmenopausal age or around menopause who have um, problems with thinning, um, poor bones, osteoporosis. And do you think that the borax would work well for that condition? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. um, osteoporosis and oste osteopenia are unnecessary ailments. Um, it's, it's just like arthritis as well. B borax is such an effective remedy that it, it, it almost does away with arthritis and osteoporosis. Um, if you have bone problems, get your boron sufficiency back up to a, a, a good level. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, as I said earlier, it is just outrageous how we are suffering some of these diseases when it, they are so mm. easily cured. It's outrageous. Just that on another note, I know rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune condition and it's quite different from osteoarthritis, um, but it does involve pain and joints. Do you, what do you think the borax would do for that condition? No, but, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, as you say, is, is a different condition and borax is marginally useful. You, what, you certainly want your boron to be uh, sufficient, but it's not a, a cure for rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, that's good to know. And the other thing that I had heard of, um, just when it comes to methods of use, um, I've heard of these great recipes where people can jump into a hot bath and they'll make a bit of a concoction. And one of those concoctions, what they put in there is borax. They might put Epsom salts in there. They might put um, bentonite clay. And the idea is to um, penetrate through the skin once again as a, as a cleanser to remove, whether it's heavy metals, whether it's um, what, whatever toxicity might be in the body. Have you heard about baths with borax? Yes, I have. Um, on the Grow Youthful website, there's a lot of people who write in uh, testimonials about their different kinds of ailments and how they've used borax. So borax is widely used for all sorts of ailments. But one warning, when, when you're having a hot bath and you put in some Epsom salts, that's a, a wonderful way of getting magnesium. And put in some borax as well. By, by all means, use some borax, but measure it. Um, you need to be aware that when you have a hot bath and you're lying uh, and, and you put a lot of borax in that bath, your pores are wide open and borax is easily absorbed through the skin. So it's possible to get an incredibly high dose of borax in a hot bath. So... Um, just be wary that if you if you tipped a whole container of borax into a hot bath, hmm. uh, you, you may get a, a, a massive dose. Yes, uh, or even we don't want overdose. that. <laughs> so um, the so, sort of dosage so, you'd be looking at yeah, is... Do, do, do measure it before okay. putting it in the bath and just be aware that it's Small quite amount. easy to get a massive dose. Okay, that's good. So on that topic... Um, contraindications and safety or overdose um, signs what, what should people watch out for you know if is is there are there a set of symptoms that people might experience if they have too much or times when they also shouldn't have borax 
Um, well, just a, a little bit of background on, on boron. Um, boron is not held in the body at all. So it's water soluble and boron is, oh, let, let me just talk in general about elements and how they're held in the body. There are some elements or, and some compounds that the body holds on to really very hard. It, it doesn't let them go. So fat-soluble vitamins and, and, and compounds, uh, they, they get into the body and they're quite difficult to get rid of. And of all the elements, iron is held onto the body the hardest. So if you have an excess of iron in your body, it's very, very difficult to get rid of. About the only way that you can get rid of iron from your body is by giving a blood donation or, or having blood drained. Uh, the body holds onto iron so absolutely hard. At the other extreme, boron is not held by the body at all. Uh, for some reason, when boron builds up in the body, you just pee it out very quickly, you know, within minutes or hours. So it's, it's actually quite difficult to build up toxic levels of boron in the body because you just pee it out so quickly. Oh, that's great to hear that. But nevertheless, there's, there's been a, a limited amount of research on borax toxicity but it's actually quite difficult to build up any any kind of toxicity mm -hmm. but if and you do eat enormous quantities of borax um it, it th there are some symptoms um and on the website i i uh, actually write them out but uh, it's it's likely that any boron toxicity symptoms would only develop after taking teaspoons <laughs> of bor borax every day for, for months. Okay. But I, I certainly don't recommend doing that in the same way that you don't overdose with table salt. So mm. think of taking table salt. I mean, do you, w would you ever eat teaspoons of table salt? Just, you know, completely unnecessary. Of course you wouldn't. In the same way, don't take tables teaspoons of, of mm. borax because it's it's obviously not good for you and oh, that's excellent if you to know. take vast quantities of borax you'll probably get diarrhea lethargy nausea um, eventually you you might have some kind of dermatitis or liver damage but the quantity of borax that you'd have to eat would just be stupid um, yeah so it's 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 uh it's very difficult to overdose on borax. Just to use it sensibly, and you're very unlikely to overdose. Mm, that's great. Oh, that's lovely. And um, any contraindications that you know anyone who shouldn't have bor borax at all, or is it quite safe for everyone to take? I'm not aware of any contraindications um, or any kind of people who shouldn't be taking it. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, a truly wonderful natural remedy. Mm, that's wonderful. I, 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 would, I would be very reluctant to, um, I, 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 I'm always wary of talking about uh, supplementing children. I'm just giving children supplements kind of, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it, it just uh, puts me on edge. Um, so I, 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 I would say uh, with children, I, 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 I'd just be wary, I, I, and, and particularly infants. I, I don't think I'd ever give an infant mm. any kind of supplement, including mm. even wonderful supplements like borax. Um, the mother can certainly be supplementing uh, if you're breastfeeding and so on. I'm not aware of any problems whatsoever there. That's wonderful, David. Well, we'll leave it at that for the interview. I think you've supplied really fantastic information. And 
As I said, David has a wonderful website and it's called growyouthful.com. And if you look at his Borax page there, there's also a lot of uh, people writing in with their experiences to see, uh, to let people know how they've done with taking the Borax, which is very encouraging. So I urge you, if you're interested in that, to go to his website and uh, and give it a go give it a go and start with small doses and you may be very pleasantly surprised and pleased with the results so thank you everyone for listening and thank you david for supplying that very valuable information thank you manisha I enjoyed speaking to you yeah. excellent bye for now we'll be speaking about another very informative topic coming up soon and that will be iodine so for those of you who are interested in this virtually miracle mineral um, tune in for our next episode lovely thanks everyone bye david see you